In this video, we'll learn how to create a dashboard showing us whether statistics associated with geographical regions illustrated in a map control. We'll be using three of the components in NetAdvantage for data visualization, these being the XAM map, which is a XAM map control, also a gauge control, and a XAM data chart control. Let's now run the sample project so we can illustrate how easily you can connect these components to create a useful dashboard showing weather data. What we're seeing here is the running sample containing a single window with a map control, gauge control, and a XAM data chart control. So the interaction here goes as follows. The map shows us a geographical area with all the regions it contains and these are shaded according to the current average monthly temperature for that particular region. We can see the average monthly temperatures for a particular region by clicking on it. This displays the current monthly temperature in the, in the gauge here and also all of the average monthly temperatures throughout the year for this particular region over time in the XAM data chart. So essentially, we can use the map to drive the rest of this screen, to drive the data being presented in the other controls in this dashboard, so we can take a more detailed look at the average monthly temperatures for a particular region. The average monthly temperature for the current month is being encoded in two ways. One, that's with the color of the region, so you can easily see that states in the south have higher average monthly temperature and the second way is with a tooltip which is displayed every time I hover a region you can see a tooltip displaying the average monthly temperature for the current month in that region. So let's now take a look at the source code we use to set up this dashboard application. We've organized layout using a grid control so we have a couple of rows here and a couple of columns with the first row and the first column hosting the XAM map control and the first row and the second column hosting the gauge control and the second row and the second column hosting the XAM data chart control. So let's take a look at how these are declared in XAML. The XAM map control is set up to use a shapefile which declares the geographical data for the map of the United States. In order to read this data, we set up a shapefile reader and we set it to the reader property of the map layer which we initialized to contain this particular data. So in the shapefile reader, we reference a file which is contained in our project under the shapefiles USAST file name. So in my project here, I have a folder called shapefiles and I have the shapefile and a DBF file which contains a number of attributes about the different regions declared in the shapefile. And both of these files are declared as content with copy to output directory set to always. This ensures that your output directory will have a shapefiles folder created and these two files will be copied into it. So this is what the CRI property references. It references the USA ST shapefile contained in the shapefile folder of the output directory. In the shapefile reader, we're using the data mapping property in order to initialize the name of each and every region in this map layer to the state name attribute of the region. Also, we initialize the caption of each and every region to the value of the state abbreviation contained in the shapefile. This data mapping is very important as it will allow us to match data that we provide in terms of weather data to the regions declared in the shapefile. Actually, we're using the name property here in each and every region for basically joining the two types of data. The region data coming in from the shapefile and the weather data we're providing as a data source to our map layer. 
Let's now take a look at the code behind and how we actually provide the weather related data for each and every region. We store weather related data in a weather stats view model. Basically, this is a class which has the name of the state, the current temperature for the current month, and a list of monthly temperatures. Month temperature is an object which just stores the name of the month and the temperature for that specific month. And we have all of our data added manually here. So basically everything we're doing in this case is we're calling a static method which returns to us a dictionary containing the name of each state and the object storing all the weather data for that state. We provide this dictionary as a data source to the layer that we've created with the shapefile reader. And specifically, we provide the values of this dictionary as we would only need the weather data to be bound to the regions of this map layer. After we call data bind, all these values are committed to the data source of this layer and then the data mapping on this layer is applied. So in this case, we're again setting up properties of the layer, specifically the name property, the value property, and the tooltip property. However, in this case, the properties that we're setting these to refer to properties of the bound object. So the name property in this case is bound to the state property of the weather stats view model that we just looked at. And also the value property is bound to, to the current temperature property of the weather stats view model. And also the tooltip is bound to the same value. So this tells this layer to use the current temperature property of the bound object for a region to set the shading of this region once the fill mode is declared as choropleth. So basically, this is what creates the different coloring of the regions in the map depending on the current temperature value for each and every region. How do we match the regions and the specific weather stats? This is where the name matching comes in. In this case, we're setting the name property to state name in the shapefile reader and to the value of the state property in the weather stats view model on the map layer level. This ensures that any weather stats data is matched to the exact region as specified by its name property. A couple of smaller settings here, we're using a, a value scale that has a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100 in order to scale the values appropriately. Uh, we're using a few different brushes which are specified with uh, blue being the coldest and red being the hottest in order to represent temperature more accurately. So this is what sets up the map. Uh, the two things to remember here is shapefile reader referencing files in the output directory. You don't need to enter the extension of the shapefile, just its file name. The data mapping, you need to set the name property of that map layer to a name that you'll be matching also in the data source of this layer. So you can match the rest of the values and you can have them displayed in the same region as specified by the, the attribute of the shapefile that you're binding it to here in the name property. So the data mapping correspondence here is critical in order to make this work. Also, the value that's used for coloring regions when the fill mode is set to choropleth is the value property here. And you can set it to any property of the bound object you'd like to have, you'd like to be used um, when coloring these regions. So how does the user interact with the map? We're handling the element click event here. And let's just quickly go to the event handler we're essentially changing the data context of the entire window and we're setting it to 
the weather stats view model for a particular state. And this is the reason we're actually using a dictionary. Uh, we're retrieving the weather stats view model value from this dictionary corresponding to the name of the state. As the dictionary has a key containing the name of the state and each and every element stores its name, which we set to the element state, we can index this dictionary and we can retrieve this weather stats view model object and set it to the data context. Once we do that, we have the gauge control declared here and its needle, the value points to the current temperature property in the data context. In the same way, we have a XAM data chart set up with two axes, category X axis and numeric Y axis. We have a single series, which is a column series, which uses the two axes we just declared above and which uses as item source the monthly temperatures property of the data context of the window. And of course, we're using the temperature property name for the values which will be displayed in the column series. In the category X axis, the labels are instantiated with the name property of each and every monthly temperature object. This ensures that when we click a region, we retrieve the appropriate weather stats view model and once it is set to the data context, the gauge and the chart update themselves to reflect the values for this particular region. So hopefully this illustrates how easy it is to set up a dashboard containing an integration of different controls from the NetAdvantage for data visualization product, including a map control, a gauge control, and a chart control. These controls are also available for Silverlight as well as WPF and you can use the exact same API and developer and user experience in these two platforms. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.